Happy Sunday, everyone. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're staying safe out there. And I hope you're staying cool. It's rather warm here today. So if it is a warm day where you are, be very careful about taking your dogs on long walks. Saw a couple today and really kind of got me a little bit nervous about seeing them running next to their owners because it's about 95 degrees and feels like a little bit over 100 with the humidity. We're going to continue on with our series about barking. Barking is a problem for everyone. I hardly know of anyone and hardly ever have known of anyone who says, barking is not an issue at my home. At some point in time, under certain conditions, barking can become problematic. If not for you, because you're half deaf or you've just habituated to it, it can certainly be a problem for your guests and certainly could be a problem for your neighbors. So let's keep rolling with this and see if we can control barking, because that's one of the first things I want to say, just as a reminder of yesterday. Barking has survival value. And that means the chances of you eliminating it altogether are very slim. And you probably shouldn't eliminate it altogether. There's value in that. I kind of like knowing when someone's on my property. I like knowing when someone's at my door. I could be in the back of my house, be in the back of my yard. I didn't know you were there waiting for me to come answer the door. So dogs are really good about just that alone, alerting us of the presence of other humans. They're also very good about warding off other humans and things of that sort. So who would ever want to really just get rid of it in its entirety? Okay, so let's talk about it. How do we control it? Well, first of all, just back in time real quick as a review from yesterday. Barking originally started as an alarm signal among wolves. It was used to tell the group, to tell the rest of the pack, ah, flee, take cover. There's something really dangerous really close by or it was used to call an assembly, a congregation. Hey, let's all meet, let's all come together right here because there is a problem and it's one that I don't feel like I can handle, but I feel like as a group we can all handle it with ease. Well, at some point these wolves came into contact with furless bipeds called mankind, more than likely hunt uh, mobile hunting groups. And from that point forward, all the way from that point, about roughly 30, 40,000 years ago, these animals started to change as we changed them. In other words, we took the original alarm signal and shaped it, shaped the alarm signal so that we could use it to alarm other people and other animals. Absolutely. We took their alarm signal and said, hey, how about you making these other animals and these other people take alarm? So that's really cool. And then it finally evolved from that to the, use your alarm signal, that barking of yours, that high-pitched yipping of yours to drive people or to drive animals into pens, up trees, down holes, and to drive people away. So it's been pretty good. We've used it for hunting dogs, to drive animals into holes in the ground, uh, up a tree, again, to herd sheep and other livestock into pens or certain areas of the pasture, and also to drive human beings away. So we shaped that over all those years, and now with today's uh, domestic dog in more of a modern world, where we're not using our dogs to drive animals up trees and down holes and in pens and so on and so forth, our dogs are still adapting, they're still evolving, they're still learning how to live with us, and they've learned a really cool trick. Barking really, truly will make humans do things. So it's more from an alarm signal. Sometimes it is if you have the approach of someone on your property, someone coming up to your door, someone passing by. But in other instances, barking has become just a controlling factor. Hey, you, you over there, come feed me right now. Hey, you, come let me out of this pen over here. I'm tired of being in this crate. It's now more from not just alarm, but to control. So there's a lot of vocalization going on and you don't hear that in wolves. Wolves are very silent animals and today's extant wolf who did not meet mobile hunting groups does not bark the way our dogs bark today. So how do we control all this? How do we take that great barking? It's a great tool, but how do we control it to fit us, to fit our needs, to fit the needs of our neighbors? Well, here's a couple of things that you have to take into consideration when you're thinking about controlling barking in your dog. Number one, decide when and where. So some of us, when we're home, eh, not a big deal. My dog's pretty quiet when I'm home. But I've heard from my neighbors that they bark their stinking heads off all day long when I leave. 
If that's the case, we could be dealing with underlying conditions, and we're going to talk about that more as we move along in this series on barking, and that your dog may be suffering from elevated levels of anxiety. They may be fearful when you're away from them. They don't like to be alone. It causes them anxiety, causes them fear, separation from you. And they could be barking because they're trying to get you to assemble, to come back, come back to me. If I can't reach you physically, then maybe I can call you from an auditory signal and have you respond to that and come back to where I am. So we'll talk about that later. Um, the way that you train home and not home really can be the only difference is that, of course, when you're not there, you need something to do the training for you. It's as simple as that. You know, even if you leave someone there and you're not there, at some point when there's no humans around, we have to know what are our, what are our dogs doing? Are they barking their heads off all day long while we're gone? And if they are, we have to have something in place to curb that barking while we are away at work or running our errands. So tomorrow, I'll talk more about that, how we can get that thing done. So today, I want to just talk about mostly at-home barking. Your home, dog's home, dog's barking. How do we control it? What do we do about it? Okay, in doing that, you have to take another couple things into account right off the bat. And I kind of told you yesterday, let me grab my racer over here, because I'm just going to do a little bit of racing here, right, right in this little area here, so you guys can see what I'm about to drop here on this board. It's very important that any time you are training any behavior whatsoever, you must take into account cognition. I've told you that a long time ago. Attention, motivation, cognition. Cognition is enhanced by the stress response and is also inhibited by the stress response. So what I'm talking about here is this, is basically three different in fact, let me use a black marker. It'll probably be better for you guys to be able to see it. So we have three different emotional states. Calm zone, arousal zone, panic reactive zone. Okay, all the way to about midway through that arousal zone, you have enhanced cognition. That is a wonderful time to start teaching your dog to be quiet, to start introducing a command like quiet or hush or no bark, whatever you choose to use. Right about here. You can tell that by your dog's barking. And you'll want to, again, I gave you a little bit of homework yesterday, start writing down. What kind of pitch was that? Was that a really high pitch? Was it frantic? Did it seem super urgent in nature? Or was it just kind of like, woof, 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 woof. That means, that means assemble. Hey, the rest of you people over there, come on up here to the front door because there's someone approaching our house. And I don't think it's a real big threat, but I definitely think that's something that we can all handle if we assemble together. So anything up to that point there from the calm zone to a little bit of an elevated heart rate, a little bit of oxygen moving through the body a little bit more, a little glucose and all that stuff, that's actually not a bad thing because we actually have enhanced cognition. Uh, hence, you hear the saying, good stress is a good thing. So stress can be a really good thing as long as it doesn't go too high. It can actually help us learn things faster and keep them in our brains for a lot longer. So the problem is, is that some animals, depending upon their age, their mental states, uh, their training, uh, any past trauma they've suffered, the, the approaching delivery person, for example, can mean a whole lot more to one dog versus another dog. It really can. Some dogs are just go, whoa, 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 and no big deal. Others like, nah, and they're gone. So depending upon what kind of dog you have and where the signal is giving you the feedback really greatly determines when you should intervene, when you should now practice your training. Because guys, the further I go up this column, the more immune I become to your input. Absolutely. Right up here is where procedural memory takes over. It's where it shuts your conscious awareness off. I'm the brain. I got it. I'll take it from here. So you can be yelling, quiet, quiet, all you want. Snap and leash all you want. You're having zero effect on the animal at this point here. And worse yet, should your little snap or should your remote call or whatever it is that you choose to use, and we're going to talk about all those devices, should it be too much, too high, too painful, you can actually drive the animal further up this column. 
And now all of a sudden, people approaching your house, for example, wow, that was a major concern of mine. It was a big concern. Now it's a major fear, major fear. So guys, I cannot tell you enough. Beware of your dog, you own your dog, you can tell. If it's going too high, too frantic, too urgent, that is not the time to start introducing this new thing called quiet. Okay, you got it? All right, we're gonna wrap it up here real quick here because now the next step is really not that hard. Okay, like in any training, you must come up with a signal of your own. Hey, you, thanks for the alarm signal, but now I'm gonna give you a signal and what do signals do? We don't start up a two-way communication. No way. I get that among humans, silence is awkward, but it's not among animals, not at all. So I don't want to get this thing going back and forth here between you and I. I'm going to give you a signal. And when you receive that signal, I need you to learn to do a behavior, to respond in a certain manner. And that will be to become quiet. So like all commands, the signal must be stereotyped. Number one rule, always. So you don't get to say quiet. Your husband says hush. Your children say no bark. And your cousin who visits all the time says stop it. So that doesn't work, guys. It doesn't work for any other type of behavior. It won't work for creating a behavior in which you want your animal to be quiet. So pick an auditory signal. I'm going to use quiet in this series. Number two, quiet. Well, what is that if I'm a dog? I don't know what quiet is. Again, you might as well be saying scuba dog for all I care. So that means you have to show the animal what does quiet mean? Again, like in all signals, there's a signal, there's an interpretant, and there's a referent. Why do I interpret it the way I do? Why do I do that? Because I've heard this word and something has happened to me. There's been an outcome after hearing this word about 500 times. So now I got it. So in the beginning, we say quiet, and then I'm going to recommend that when you first start this training, I don't care what means you want to end up with eventually, when you first start training, it's really important that we are able to adjust levels and we give the dog as many clues as possible as to what's going on. So I really like a conventional method. I'm holding, I know I'm wearing a black shirt, I'm holding a black leash, but so let me just hold it over here. I just like a long leash, about a 15 footer, 20 footer. So what that means, when I have a new dog in my house, maybe I just adopted a dog yesterday and I determined, oh my gosh, this dog barks all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna hook a long line on it. Okay, when I hear it go woof, 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 woof. In other words, I can tell, I've already heard this dog bark about 100 times. I can, I'm getting an idea. What's really high, what's really urgent, and what isn't yet. Could be the closer that thing gets to my home. So I hear this barking right about here in the middle of the way of the arousal column. I'm going to now introduce a command called quiet. And when I do that, I'm just going to give a little tug on my leash. Quiet. Not a correction. Hey, tug. Hey, I'm touching you. Excuse me. Uh, hello, you over there. You, you running your mouth. Blah, blah, blah. Pay attention to me. Yeah. And know this in the beginning, these tugs will only serve the purpose of disrupting the barking. Disrupting it. it won't stop it. No, so wrap your head around that too. Be patient here, guys. Quiet, tug. Quiet, tug. Quiet, tug. And then eventually that thing will either come to your home, and now you need to decide what you want to do with your dog at that point, or it will leave your home or it'll pass by out of your dog's vision. And when your dog is quiet, well done. Good quiet. You can try a treat, but I will tell you this much, if your dog went too far up that arousal column, it won't take it. That's part of the stress response. Inhibit the storage of more energy. Use all the energy you have now. But you can certainly try it and give it a pet. So we start easy. Quiet, tug. Quiet, tug. Quiet, tug. And this may take a few days, could take a few weeks, depending on how many times your dog barks. But be ready, be ready to train. So that means when your dog is home with you, it is, I don't care what age it is, while you're home, while you can supervise your dog, it's dragging a long leash around with it. So yeah, so a dog's way over there in the front room, I can pick it up, quiet, quiet. 
And again, it may not stop the barking at first, but it will draw the dog's attention temporarily back to you. And soon, no telling, I don't, it all depends on what the dog's cognition is, its age, and many other factors, how many repetitions it'll take where the animal starts to go, okay, I started to pick up on something here now again. I, this dude keeps saying quiet while I'm barking. I'm trying to send the dorm alarm signal out here, but this dude just keeps yelling quiet at me. And he keeps tugging on me. So I'm starting to pick up something. That word quiet comes with a tug. Now we're making headway. There we go. As soon as you see that, then you will know you are there because the dog will pause. The dog will look at you and will become quiet for a second or two. Now you're starting to make ground. It's looking at you for direction. Okay, so what are you gonna do about this, Brian? You gonna take care of this thing? Or do I have to continue to take care of it? That's why in the beginning, when you're first doing this as well, I want a long line because I want you to train from afar. I don't want to have the dog receive or perceive reinforcement of its behavior because it caused me to assemble. It caused me to come to it. It caused me to come to the window and gather with it. That's one of the difficult things about barking is the darn thing is continuously reinforced. Bark, 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 even only three barks and someone disappears out of sight. Ching, that worked. Yep, ran them off. All you guys stay back there. We didn't need to assemble after all. I ran them off. And also, bark, bark, bark. Okay, you're bugging the daylight saw me. I'll come feed you. And that's what you do. You get up and you go feed your dogs. Or bark, 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 and oh my God, I can't sleep. I'm going to go let the puppy out of the crate. It can just get into bed with us at this point here because I need my sleep. So barking is difficult because it is continuously reinforced whether you mean it or you don't. So that being said, we want to do all that we can to make sure we don't reinforce it. We are reinforcing quiet, not barking. So if you can, if you can do this from afar, hey, I'm over here and I'm going to remain over here. Just kind of know that in the future. So when you go to that door and you start barking and I'm sitting way back over here on this bar stool, when I say quiet, you become quiet. I'm not coming over there. I don't need to come over there. You don't need to even let me know about that right this moment here. But seeing how you did, I just need you to be quiet because I got all everything under control. Okay, so it's really, really try to focus on that. All right, so that's with the leash. And then once you get to that point where they're pausing, you feel like you've got all this stuff done, you've been doing it for about two or three days, depending upon how much barking your dog and how many opportunities your dog's giving you by barking, then you start to step up the tug. Okay, so now, I'm not just touching you on the shoulder anymore. Go on, excuse me. I'm going, you need to stop. You really need to stop. And you take that up to whatever level is necessary to stop the behavior. It may be your level one tug. That's good enough. Okay, I'm quiet. I'm good. You can deal with it. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Brian. You just deal with it. Or it could be your level two. It could be your level three. Try to pull the dog back to you. Throw in another command. Not only just quiet, but hey, tell you what, come. Why don't you come on over here to me right now? And I'll go deal with that. How about you just stay right here? I'll go to the window. I'll take care of it. That's called social support. That's called me being that gatekeeper of the society here. It all starts to flow in together. And I'll talk about more of that. We've got a couple more days I want to spend on barking. So I'll have more time. Don't want to take up your whole afternoon speaking about it. But yes, stereotype the signal. First of all, make sure we're in the middle of the arousal column and not above that. Give the animal a stereotype signal, both auditory and haptic, by a tug. Know in the beginning you're only going to disrupt the signal. You're not going to stop it right off the bat. You may pause it, hit the pause button on it, but it'll probably start right back up again if the thing that caused it to give the alarm signal is continually there. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to train this for animals who are just bugging you who are trying to influence your behavior. They're not alarmed, they're not giving an alarm signal, they're simply trying to control you. Kind of like a herding dog. They're not afraid of those sheep. I'm going to control you. I need you, sheep, to get with those sheep over there and then with the rest of the group in that pen way over there. And I'm going to use an auditory signal by yipping and barking. If that doesn't get it done, I'm gonna follow it up with a haptic signal. I'm gonna nip you in the butt. Well, this is our kind of like our little proverbial Nipping in the butt. Quiet. That's a little nip. Quiet. That's a little nip. I need you to do something. 
And I'm going to go easy till you figure out what that is. Because I know in your little canine brain, you're probably going, wait, what do you mean be quiet? No one's quiet during a time like this. Are you serious? So you got to convince them. It's going to take a little time. And then when you start convincing them, you'll be able to tell. We dial that up a notch till we give a signal strong enough and powerful enough and quick enough to immediately influence their behavior so that they are quiet. And then in tomorrow's video, I'll talk to you about how to do that. And another means talk to you about how to do that when you're not home with the animal, what will work for you. And then eventually, guess what? Your dog will develop filters, filters. Hey, I bark at this. All I get is quiet, doink. I bark at this. Initially, I get well done. Then maybe followed up with a, but now be quiet because I got it from here. Then I get a doink. So over time, I've owned dogs, just about every dog I've ever owned has developed filters. Filters. They don't bark at this stuff across the street and the dog barking six houses down. No. No, I never rewarded that. There was never a benefit for that. Not least for me. There was only quiet and then a correction if you didn't become quiet. But some of these other reasons for barking, I reinforced. Well done. Then I'm going to be quiet. But again, it, it works just like that. Okay, guys, tomorrow we're going to keep on moving with our series on controlling barking. Because I tell you what, there's, there's hardly anything that will drive your blood pressure through the darn roof, make you not want to own the dog. And this, that's what this whole 365-day challenge is about, is lowering the blood pressure. Make your heart go pitter-patter. Make you want to love your dog. So if you can control that barking, I am here to tell you right now, we're going to be a good long way towards that goal that I have if we can get that thing done. So stay tuned again for tomorrow and probably the next day after that. I'm going to spend a few days on this. I, I got into a thing that's only going to be a couple days. But man, your input and your feedback has told me, man, I need to go a little deeper down the rabbit hole. These people are curious. Uh, they want to know more. And there's so many situations covering barking. So man, I love you people because you're just like me. I love permission to go down the rabbit hole. So I'm going to go down this rabbit hole a little bit deeper on barking, and we're going to cover every aspect that you can possibly think of so that you guys will be prepared to control any situation that you encounter with your own personal dog. All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, if you found this information beneficial, like always, please share it with someone else. Make their lives a little easier with their dogs. And if you have any questions, feedback, or you want to send me further down that rabbit hole, send it my way, Brian with the Y at TamingTheWild.com, or drop it right down here on the old Facebook feed. Until I see you tomorrow, make a great training day. Work on this barking. Make your little notes. Get after guys. Stereotype signal, stereotype response all the way across the board. And I'll see you tomorrow.